What's up everybody, it's Tanner with Built Not Bot and today I'm going to show you how I built my custom kitchen island. We made this island with a black walnut top and the base is all birch plywood painted black. This was an awesome build and we are so excited with how it turned out in the end. I hope you enjoy watching. Please like and subscribe. So here you can see some of those grids I've been making. And these are all spaced out a half inch apart all the way down the whole length of this sheet of MDF. Every half inch I made a mark. And then you can see this way there aren't any hashes. And then on this side there's a bunch more again. And like I mentioned earlier, this is all going to be picture framed on the side. So this piece here is going to stay flat. Then we're going to start with our grooves going in this direction. To give you an idea on what I'm aiming for here is something along these lines. I just threw this together real quick and I really like the spacing on it. Um, my jig did kind of slide on me a little bit. I just had a clamp on it. So there's a little bit of a difference in the gaps here, but we're aiming for more of a gap like this one here. I just need to come up with a way to make sure that this doesn't move at all while I'm routing it because if I get off, it's gonna look terrible. All right, so here's my plan. And I don't know if it's the best plan, but it's a plan nonetheless. And I'm gonna take my Festool guide rail and clamp it down. And this is the spacing that I need here so that when my router bit is sitting on here, it cuts a path right in this first section here. It might be over just a little bit more than I want, but I wanna continue on this half inch grid line. So after I make this cut, I'll scoot this rail over a half inch in that direction and then reset it. The way I look at it is if I screw this up, I'm out a sheet of MDF, which nowadays is actually more expensive than it should be, but I hope it goes well because there's a lot of half inch lines that I need to run this router across. Wish me luck. One last thing, I added a stop block on the back side here and on the front side over there, just that piece of MDF. And that's gonna hopefully allow me to keep the groove stopping in the same spot all the way down the line. So I'll just have to move these stop blocks over as I'm working. Well, my first pass went really well. Stopping at about the same spot on each edge and everything went nice and straight and even. One thing that I should mention, so on your router, you need to know which direction the blade is spinning because when you go over here, you want it so that the blade is spinning towards whatever straight edge you're doing. Because in, in that case, it's gonna want to pull the router tight against the straight edge. If it was spinning counterclockwise in this case, it would want to pull the router away from the straight edge. So figure out which direction, usually it's always clockwise and make sure you're orientating that so that when you're moving along here, it's getting pulled in tight to your straight edge. So I finally finished all of these grooves with the router. I sure wish I had a CNC that I could have just plugged this into and let it run. You can see in the middle here, we've got one little hiccup where we had a miscommunication and got off track, but I plan on fixing that with some Bondo. And my whole plan was I'm just gonna fill this, make it completely flat again, and then start from scratch. I used duct tape on the sides that were fine still. And uh, I just ended up peeling up this duct tape, as you can see here. And it actually worked out pretty well here in the end. You'll be able to hardly see it after it gets painted and everything.
To start with the cabinet portion of this, I started with just notching out the uh, kick plate area for where your feet would go when you're sitting at the cabinets. And I'm just making three really simple identical cabinet frames. Uh, you'll see here I'm running the dado blade through to give me a groove from the bottom of my cabinet as well as the back, uh, the back wall of the cabinet as well, which you'll see later on in assembly. But if you have a dado blade, this goes really quickly and makes for an easy assembly. So here I'm just dry fitting my cabinet together with a couple clamps. And on the back, you can see how this back panel sits really nice and flush with the edge which is perfect for what we want. Up next, I cut down these stretchers on the table saw. These are seven inches. Uh, you can really go whatever size you want. I wanted them a little bit larger for more strength and rigidity. And I'm gonna put one on the front and one on the back at the top of this cabinet. So there's gonna be one going across right here, the front, and then the other one's gonna go way in the back corner. And then I will pin nail or brad nail through the back of this into the sides, the bottom, and then the other side. And here it is with the top runners on it and secured. I added glue to the dados as well. And it's super important when you're gluing this all up that you stay nice and square throughout the whole process. And we are sitting beautifully right here, square. So I'm gonna leave this front clamp on probably for another hour or two, and then I'm gonna start building the second of three. Want to get rid of the ugly plywood edges that show through when you're building cabinets or other furniture? Try using some edge banding. This is an iron-on Baltic birch edge banding that has a heat activated adhesive on it. You simply use an iron and press it on and you're left with a real wood finish that looks a lot cleaner than dealing with the typical plywood grain. So after completing all three of my cabinet bases, I brought them into the house one by one and then I set them on the floor, shimmed them all, and then screwed them together to make it all one unit. Uh, it's important that you keep everything nice and level so that when you get your countertop put on there, everything sits nicely. You don't have to worry about stuff rolling off of the countertop. You'll also see that I got the doors and the faces attached to the drawers as well. And uh, we're really liking how these look. We did soft close hinges uh, with the ball bearing slides. And this is going to be for our garbages. We're going to have two garbages in this cabinet. I'm going to make a little bracket for those to sit into tightly. And then we've got the center cabinet, which is just a basic cabinet. And then to the right of that, we just have our utility for the drain for the sink. And then we've got an electrical wire underneath there where I'm going to put an outlet so we can plug in like crock pots and things like that. What's up guys? Welcome to the shop. Um, I've been working on the kitchen island for quite a while now. We actually have it installed in our house as you probably just saw in the video. And now I've been working on the top to the island, which is going to be all black walnut. As you can see behind me, I've got a couple great pieces that I've been milling over the last couple days after work. And uh, I finally got them all jointed to where they're gonna be good enough for me to glue together. I spared you the details, plus my dust collector went out, as you can tell over here. Absolute disaster. But the cloth bag on my dust collector tore. I did find a way to put a trash bag inside of it and that got me by for now, but I need to see if I can order a bag for that uh, lower portion of the dust collector. But anyways, over here, it's a little close up of all this walnut. I think I'm actually gonna leave this little knotty feature here instead of like filling it with epoxy and smoothing it out. I think I'm gonna leave it with a little bit of texture. This is gonna be right where people sit 
and it's just a small amount. I'll sand it up so it's nice and smooth to the touch, but I really like the way that looks. And then over here, I kind of have marked out unofficially where the sink's gonna go. There's just gonna be a small little prep sink that goes right here. But yeah, spent a little time trying to get the grain match as best as I could. I really love this joint here. I think that's almost a perfect match. And then this one's okay. This one isn't the greatest, but I still think it looks cool. There's a little bit of this lighter sap wood that runs through here, but my wife actually really likes that little light accent wood in there. So we're gonna keep it just like this. I'm gonna run some dominoes in here and get it all glued up. So you can see here that I had to double up on my Bessie clamps. Luckily I had these bar clamps I made a while back that were long enough to make the span but I alternate these clamps on both the bottom and the top to get an even tightening pressure and to keep this nice and flat, which is the ultimate goal when you're doing a glue up. You can kind of tell by how that bar is sitting on it nice and flat that it's, it's doing what it's supposed to. In order to keep everything flat, I added some C-channel to the underside of this island top. I did two sticks of the C-channel and then used threaded inserts to bolt it in. This is going to ensure that it stays flat over time regardless of the seasonal humidity change. And here you can see a side view of how it is sitting at the moment. Here you can see me finishing the top with Rubio Mono Coat Pure. I'm not sponsored by Rubio in any way, but this is my go-to product. I use it on virtually everything. You just simply wipe it on, let it sit, and then buff it off, and it gives you a beautiful finish every time. And here it is all finished up in our kitchen. We still have a little bit of work left to do in this house, uh, starting with trim work and baseboards, but we're making progress every day. And I got the sink and the faucet all hooked up for the island, so it's ready to go when we're ready to use it. Again, thanks for watching everybody. I greatly appreciate it. It means a ton to me. And if you've been enjoying my content, please like and subscribe. Have a good one and we'll see you on the next build.